Scott Boris has become infamous for running up the price on his clients and waiting as long as he has to until one team gives in to his demands. And in a lot of people's opinions, this has ruined the off season by making it take forever. 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 This offseason was headlined by the two-way superstar and best player in baseball Shohei Otani and Japanese star pitcher Yashinobu Yamamoto. And both of these guys had the top teams in baseball in an absolute bidding war to get them on their team. And for these two, it made sense. Otani's the best player in the game and brings in a ton of revenue for whatever team he's on. And Yamamoto's only 25 years old and a lot of scouts were giving him ace level potential. You can see why teams kept bidding higher and higher on these guys to try to cut out the competition that wasn't willing to pay as much. Okay, well you have to buy that dude. It's a no brainer. I mean, I'd buy that dude. But then we have probably the next two highest rated players, Cody Bellinger and Blake Snell, who are both represented by Scott Boris and who are both reportedly looking for deals over $200 million. Bellinger was the highest rated position player in a pretty thin free agent class at only 28 years old, with a rookie of the year gold glove two silver sluggers, two all-stars, and an MVP under his belt, and Snell's made an all-star team himself and is currently coming off his second Cy Young award at 31 years old. But we didn't hear anything about these guys all off-season. So where was the bidding war for these two? Where's the $200 million contract that they were both asking for? And why didn't we hear anything about teams even coming close to what these two were looking for? Well, it's because neither of these guys are worth $200 million right now and teams know this. This offseason, it's become obvious that teams are seeing through Boris's bullshit, and they know what kind of players these two actually are right now, and they're not willing to pay what the players are asking for, because they shouldn't. How about new? You crazy Dutch bastard. On the surface, you could look at what these guys did this year, and you could make an argument that they put up numbers that should get them a big contract. Bellinger bounced back in a big way this year. He hit over 300 with 26 homers and finished top 15 out of 133 qualified hitters in both OPS and WRC Plus while bouncing between center and first. And like I said with Snell, he just won his second Cy Young this year, leading all qualified starting pitchers in ERA and average allowed and also finishing third in strikeouts. These guys were two of the better players in baseball this year. And on top of this, over their careers to this point, they put up good total numbers and accolades. It doesn't seem too crazy for them to ask for so much money, right? Well, this is where we have to dive a bit deeper, because when you start to look at both of these guys a little bit closer, you can see why teams aren't willing to pay them top dollar right now and why they're not wrong for thinking this. We'll start with Bellinger. And if you noticed earlier when I talked about him, I said that he bounced back this year. And that's because the two years before this, his numbers took an absolute nosedive. Between 2021 and 2022, saying that Bellinger struggled is an understatement. He had easily the two worst years of his career with the lowest OPS and WRC plus of all hitters with at least 900 plate appearances during that time. But in his defense, this dude kept getting hit by freak injuries left and right. Starting in the 2020 postseason, Bellinger dislocated his right shoulder celebrating a home run in the NLCS. Then in 2021, he fractured his left fibula colliding with A's pitcher Raymin Goudouin in April. And in September, he collided with teammate Gavin Lux and fractured a rib. Every morning I break my legs and every afternoon I break my arms. Bellinger himself even said at times that the pain and weakness he was feeling from his injuries was hurting his performance. So after taking basically a one year prove it deal with the Cubs, he needed to bounce back to earn that big contract that he was on pace for early in his career. And like we talked about, he did do that this year. Sort of. See, early in his career, Bellinger was a very patient power hitter that had a bit of a swing and miss tendency, but he got better with this en route to winning his MVP in 2019. But this year, even though Bellinger put up great numbers again, he was almost the complete opposite kind of hitter. When we look at the advanced numbers, his power this year was his worst ever with his barrel percentage, exit velo, and hard hit percentage all at career lows. And through his down years, he got way more aggressive at the plate and he stayed 
stayed that way this year with his walk percentage and chase rate both still down. Peak Bellinger was a hitter that either took his walk or he made sure that he got his pitch to hit and then used that power to do massive damage. But now he's more the kind of hitter that's shortening up and just looking to get the bat on anything close, which is gonna help him keep the Ks down, but then he isn't walking or hitting the ball as well consistently. And this is why teams aren't as sure that he can put up numbers like this again. This aggressive contact first profile, especially when you're not hitting the ball hard consistently, it's not the type of player you can really rely on for a higher on base percentage or slugging. Some guys this year with basically the same profile were Nico Horner, Jeff McNeil, Kbert Ruiz, and Miguel Rojas. Now Bellinger also plays a very good center field, but I'll ask you guys, would you feel good about giving any of those other guys, even in their peaks, over $200 million? No, 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 hell no, no. Bellinger just ended up signing a three-year, $80 million deal to go back to the Cubs with player options after each of the first two years. Basically the same kind of deal that Carlos Correa signed with the Twins in his first go around in free agency. And this is the perfect kind of deal for him in this situation. Given his early success and putting up good numbers again this year, Bellinger does deserve to get a good amount of money per year. But with those down years, and especially with the underlying numbers this year, if he wants a higher amount per year and especially for longer, he needs to prove that he can either do this again with this new approach at the plate or get back to the type of hitter he was when he was winning an MVP. This deal though is a win-win for Bellinger. If he puts up good numbers again, he can just opt out after this year or next year and go get his massive contract. Or at worst, he gets 80 million over the next three years, even if his numbers drop back down. I see this as an absolute win. So we have our answer on Bellinger, but now what about Blake Snell? Cause as of writing this, he hasn't signed yet and he reportedly turned down a six year, $165 million offer from the Yankees. Since 2018, where Snell really came into his own, he's put up some pretty good numbers. Out of 31 starters with at least 750 innings in this time, he has the fifth lowest ERA, the third highest strikeout percentage and the second best average allowed. That's pretty good, right? That's good. Now he's also missed some time during that stretch, only making 30 starts twice since 2018, but this alone isn't the reason he's not getting paid like a two-time Cy Young winner. That's because he has one teeny, tiny, massive problem with his game. See, Snell has to be this good with strikeouts and especially not allowing hits, because as far as starters go, he's got next to no command. He's the kind of pitcher that has really good stuff, but no idea where it's going. He's been the worst of those 31 starters since 2018 in both walk percentage and location plus, and the second worst in location plus with his fastball. So along with this keeping him from going very deep into games, it's a big problem when he's missing in the wrong place. Ball four, ball eight. Low and Vaughn has walked the bases loaded on 12 straight pitches. Boy, how can these guys lay off pitches that close? Over his career, his ERA has tended to fluctuate up and down because of this lack of command. Because when Snell can either be unhittable or just keep the walks within reason, he's anywhere from good to great. But if the walks get away from him or guys can get a couple extra hits off him, especially at the wrong time, then he's average at best. It's this inconsistency coming from his lack of command that's costing him that $200 million contract he wants. Because teams aren't going to pay for a two-time Cy Young winner when they're not sure if they're actually going to get that guy or if they're going to be paying him $30 million plus that year and end up getting just an average starting pitcher. That's why for Snell, I don't see him signing a contract like Bellinger did because we know what he is at this point and he's coming off his second Cy Young season. What else could he do this year to raise his stock more and earn that contract that he's looking for? I think he could end up getting a multi-year deal. It's just probably not gonna be for as much money as he's hoping for. I mean, unless a team is really stupid and desperate enough to pay whatever he wants. So congratulations, Blake Snell. Welcome to the Angels. Teams are getting smart enough now to where they can look past the numbers a guy's putting up and really figure out what kind of player he is. And more importantly, what they can expect from him going forwards. They know what a player is really worth. And we've been seeing how the end of these 
big contracts can really kill a team's payroll if you're dishing out big money to a guy that's nowhere worth what he's getting paid. The smart teams know what a guy's value is, and they're sticking to that value when they look to bring him in. The player or Scott Boris or whoever can ask for whatever they want, they can hold out, and maybe a team gets desperate enough, but the smart ones know that they're better off spreading out that money to guys that are worth what they're getting paid. But what do you think about all this? Would you have been okay with your team signing either Bellinger or Snell to a massive contract like they were looking for? Or instead, would you use that money somewhere else to make your team better? If you enjoyed the video, please hit like and subscribe. And for more baseball content like this, go ahead and click the video on your screen now. Thanks again for watching and supporting the channel. Have an awesome day. Later.